is intense, brutal, and very, very real. To help prepare military personnel for the reality of combat, coalition militaries are turning to technology. Using combat and tactical simulators to help train soldiers, sailors, and airmen. Training them how to react, how to use weapon systems, how to fly a jet on a combat mission, or a tank on a patrol. Simulated warfare is changing the way coalition forces prepare for combat, helping them to be more effective, more capable, more deadly, to win in combat. In the 20th century, military exercises became a common way of training soldiers, sailors, and airmen. Smoke grenades, machine guns, even real explosions, all were used to help add realism. A realism that military leaders knew was important. Important for success on the battlefield, at sea, or in the air. In the orchestrated chaos that is war, military personnel must react automatically, without hesitation. In combat, the stresses are acute. Bullets flying everywhere, shells raining in. Perhaps even seeing comrades fall. A soldier must reflexively act without thinking. It's critical to their success and even survival. Today, coalition militaries continue to use large and often complex exercises as a means of training. Training for potential deployment to hotspots around the world. Technology is profoundly changing the way soldiers, sailors, and airmen train. It's known as simulated warfare, simulated air battles, simulated combat patrols, simulated missile engagements. Technology is making a big difference in helping to train coalition military personnel. The reasons for using advanced technology to train is quite simple. Simulated warfare saves money and lives. Looking much like high-tech video games, Advanced simulators provide basic to advanced training for operating vehicles, weapons systems, and even conducting war games. It also helps by exposing military personnel to stress by exposing them to simulated combat situations. Flight simulators take pilots from initial qualification training all the way through real-time virtual combat mission rehearsals. Most military experts agree simulation training is essential. It has been vitally important for U.S. and coalition military operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. Oh, I got a group. Because a mistake in a simulator can help save a life on the battlefield. The U.S. Army understands the importance of simulators for soldiers going into combat. Last year alone, they spent in excess of $3 billion on simulators. Colonel Francisco Espelier is in charge of the U.S. Army's simulator projects. He leads the Program Executive Office for Simulation Training and Instrumentation, known as POSTRI. 
the immediate benefits of simulators are that we can, you can make a mistake in a simulator, you can replay that, you can go back in and correct the actions that you saw. Because the big things about simulator is, is to do after action reviews that allow us to review what training did they get done uh, in the simulator and what did they do right and what did they do wrong. We reinforce the things they did right and we correct the things they did wrong and we are able to go back in and do it again and again until the soldier believes, uh, achieves that skill level that we're looking for. I think uh, our simulation devices that we have fielded today are focused on tactics, techniques and procedures versus on a graphic visual picture. Uh, but we're trying to train our soldiers in on those tactics, techniques and procedures they need to to engage uh, you know, the current uh, uh, enemy that we see on the battlefield today. So while it doesn't look as, gr as graphically appealing as maybe some of the gaming systems that they play, uh, the simulators are for a different level of training. Now we do have gaming engines. We just fielded the Virtual Battle Space 2 gaming engine, which is a tactics, techniques, and procedures uh, ga gaming tool. So that gives them some of that uh, you know, Medal of Honor-like fidelity that they're looking for. But it's a smaller scale if you would, training capability. It doesn't do the large-scale collective training that we can do in our simulators. One of the main goals of modern combat simulators is to induce stress, to help train soldiers to react and think properly under stressful conditions. I think that's one of the key things about simulation or synthetic environment is, is our ability to adjust to whatever the current tactics and techniques and procedures that are being used by the insurgents. We adjust to what they do, we train our soldiers on it here, we use the synthetic environment because it is the most cost effective, less environmentally uh, uh, impact in terms of utilizing simulators. And it also allows us to do certain things uh, that allow the soldiers to, again, be immersed in it. Our goal with, with our simulator is, is to get them into a position where their heart rate goes up, they sweat, they feel like they're actually in that environment, where we kind of stop in terms of reality and immerse them in the synthetic environment to get them that same level of training that they're going to really need to be able to react quickly when they're in the area of operation. Combat convoys are one of the most dangerous missions for soldiers. Simulators are being used to help train soldiers to deal with ambushes and IEDs, helping them to fight back and to survive. Using computer simulators to train soldiers is cost effective and safe. They can help train soldiers for urban warfare, provide training in combat convoy procedures, and even teach soldiers how to improve their marksmanship. Fort Benning, Georgia, home of some of the U.S. Army's most advanced tactical training. Here, the U.S. Army is utilizing a unique simulator that's designed to help soldiers train for deployments. It's called the Close Combat Tactical Trainer, also known as CCTT. It's making an immense difference by quickly and efficiently training soldiers for dangerous missions, such as combat convoys. CCTT, um, Close Combat Tactical Trainer, is our primary training simulation device to, to train collective. We train uh, the Abrams and the Bradleys and Humvees in a collective environment. Uh, and again, train convoys uh, so that they're able to understand how they're going to react and engage, for example, ambushes that they might encounter uh, in the air of operation. The other thing that's good about our simulation device is that we take geo-specific databases. So it's a, it's a terrain that they're actually going to be in when they go to Iraq or Afghanistan. They do it here first in the simulated environment. And again, we can also get uh, real-time data today about, let's say, an ambush that might have occurred or an IED attack, and we can create that same scenario in the synthetic environment and train them today on the enemy's tactics, techniques, and procedures that make our soldiers that much more effective when they get there because they'll, they'll have experienced the latest tactics and techniques and procedures by going through AARs that we get from the air of operation. And again, as I said, then we just script the scenario towards the AARs of the things that are going on today. One thing I didn't talk about, and where do most people put IEDs? All right, Google Iraq specific. Where are they gonna put an IED? Side, side, side of the road, okay? So right now, let's just get in the mentality, drivers, you driver, 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 driver. All right, let's not start pulling off the side of the road if anything happens. Every time we get a new class, the lieutenants think it's Call of Duty or some of the other games, and then as soon as they get in, they realize that it's not. Uh, 
the pneumatic machine guns. They actually have to drop the magazine and put the new magazine in. Um, the actual hands-on, the feeling that they're getting by being in the vehicle, uh, using the radio. I know the video games, I'm not a big video gamer myself. Uh, it's just different. They'll come in here, they'll be shaken from the experience, uh, laughing at each other for not making a decision. I know they don't get that in a video game. Everything they do is recorded, both uh, their FM communication as well as every, every movement they make in the vehicle. We come back in the AR room, they can see it. For all of them, it's the first time I've ever seen it or anything they've done and actually put it on the screen so they can see what they're doing. We can do a uh, playback. Everything you see over FM is recorded. All the video is captured. So when you keep that in mind, make sure you use proper radio procedures. And definitely, everything we're doing here, bottom line, is going to save your life. So the mistakes you make here now, you're not going to make them six months from now or nine months from now. Or you might be able to even stop yourself before you do make the mistake thinking, I did it on the screen, I saw it, it was AAR for me, I heard myself and how nervous I was, and how my inability to even say the word two or three, I did that phonetically. You start understanding things and how, bottom line, you're gonna say a grid that's gonna save somebody's life, and you're gonna do it right. When they can actually come in and see what they're doing, I can be in here all morning, I about four hours with two squads, they can go through it twice, make the same mistakes, uh, put different leadership in it, and they're gonna learn from their own mistakes without having to be in a vehicle. So some of the things that saves me is I don't have to have any drivers. I don't have to have somebody to actually go to the range and qualify on a 50 cal. Then get up there, understand what it feels like to be in the turret and not be shot at. And the next time they go, they're going to be the driver. So they actually feel what it's like um, to be driving that vehicle or to stop the vehicle. Um, this trainer, without a doubt, saves lives. Uh, just the basic radio communication and then the AAR afterwards, it, it's well worth the money. Accuracy with a weapon in combat is one of critical importance. Training soldiers how to shoot well is time consuming and expensive. So the U.S. Army, in conjunction with industry, developed the engagement skills trainer. The EST provides initial and sustainment marksmanship training, squad and fire team collective training, and judgmental use of force. EST is a fantastic uh, marksmanship trainer because it allows us to go through, again, uh, without spending the ammunition, it allows us to go through all the steps that we need to go through to make sure our soldiers are trained properly in marksmanship, and it, and it allows us to do it in a high fidelity system that gives you the same feel like if you're firing a real weapon system. Uh, so we can go over it and over it, and, and if we have an issue with a soldier that doesn't quite understand how to get his breathing right or the trigger pull, and again, we're not wasting ammunition and we're focusing on that soldier's specific requirements, where it's very difficult to do that in a, in, a, in a range qualification type scenario because you really have, you're under a time constraint to move soldiers through uh, so they don't get the, the benefit, if you would, of, of an AAR type situation that you get in a simulator. The EST's great benefit is that there's an AAR piece that after a soldier fires, you can check and see, you know, how they breathed, how their trigger, how their trigger squeeze was, and what they were actually looking at when they were looking through uh, the site. So it, it's a fantastic tool that allows us to really do great training uh, to get our soldiers better to be better marksmanship. Objective of the EST is uh, we use it for fundamentals. Uh, there's three modes of training. We have uh, marksmanship shoot, don't shoot, and collective, and basically works on the fundamentals of all those three modes of training, helping the soldiers uh, train better. One thing we use it for a lot here is uh, with our basic training units here, is we use it for uh, marksmanship. In the past, we couldn't have seen real time what the soldier's doing. Uh, with the EST trainer, you actually can see what they're doing two seconds before they squeeze the trigger, as they squeeze the trigger, and two seconds after they squeeze the trigger, so you're catching all the real time feedback. So in the old days, you used to they would jerk the trigger, and you would see the shots, you know, bang, 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 sideways, and you say, okay, they jerked the trigger. Or if they were breathing, you see the shots, bang, 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 up and down, you say, okay, they're breathing wrong. But with EST, you can actually can watch, and you can see the blue, and then if they jerk the trigger, there'll be some space between the blue. Or if they're breathing, you'll see the blue going up and down. And that's a lot more feedback, and you can take one drill sergeant and can watch at least 15 soldiers at a time go. I mean, what it does, it makes the time on the range. We're not really taking bullets away. Maybe what you would think about, we're making, we're doubling the bullets. Because now they got all their simulated bullets and all their real bullets. So I get, actually, they're getting double bullets now. I think the EST gives us the confidence and the advantage of getting the feel of the weapon in your hand before you actually go to the range, including the kickback and, and the force that it's going to have when they, when they have this here. Simulators are also helping fighter pilots hone their skills. 
from dodging anti-aircraft missiles to analyzing dogfighting skills. Simulators are making a big difference. Cold Lake, Alberta, home of one of the largest annual coalition Air Force exercises. Here, in the massive expanses of the Canadian North, fighter pilots from around the world go head to head, training for war. The exercise is called Maple Flag and much of it is a simulated war. With none of the missiles real and no one actually getting shot down, the only way for the fighter pilots to learn from their mistakes is courtesy of some very high-tech eyes on the ground. The evolution of Maple Flag and mission planning itself has gone from the basic acetate slide and the whiteboard into uh, currently we have the, uh, the portable flight planning system and that allows us to take a look at the aircraft in real time prior to the mission in order to achieve the planning along with that various uh, presentation software. Before each mission, the planes are programmed into a computer generated version of the mission flow. The pilots get to see what they're about to do up on the big screen at the mass brief. Before takeoff, each jet is loaded with a GPS pod that sends images back to Cold Lake's Air Force Tactical Training Center. The ACMI pods, they take the information via microwave and send it back to AFTTC, the Air Force Tactical Training Center, to be displayed on the screen. And that provides us with the continuity of learning that the participants require throughout the exercise. The ACMI system, or Air Combat Maneuvering Instrumentation System, tracks and records the position of every aircraft in the skies over Cold Lake. From tankers to jets, the data from each aircraft is merged with the others, giving a complete tactical picture of the entire mission. With a lot of planes in the air from a lot of different countries, it's a perspective that's critical. With today's uh, theater of operations, there's so much going on in the air and on the ground, it can get tainted and mixed very quickly. Uh, it's very important that the forces in the air know where the friendly forces on the ground are and therefore not engage. So the advancements that we're making at Maple Flag technology-wise and, and with our training systems are enabling that type of learning. Fighter pilot against fighter pilot. Air-to-air -air combat. Blue versus red. This is just one layer of the war game played at Cold Lake. The other is much harder to see, but just as deadly. With our surface threat emitters, uh, we can replicate uh, some of the more modern threats. We are constantly reviewing that and going through uh, undergoing change to, uh, to improve that, as well as provide a more robust threat capability. This will enable us to turn up the heat, as it were, uh, in, a, in the scenario. Those turning up the heat are the men and women at the controls of STU, the Surface Threat Electronic Warfare System. They're the ones shooting the fake missiles at the jets. My role is actually to play the bad guy. So when they fly over top of me, it's over top of my sights. What happens is I, I will launch a uh, surface-to-air missile against them, and then they will have to maneuver against it. It's basically like a big video game, really. And yeah, it is a fun, it is a fun job. I have uh, five operators, and they all operate the threat emitters from here. Today was a good day. I think we had three kills today, but that's not bad. Without this technology, exercise Maple Flag would be very tough to pull off. For fighter pilots, this exercise is important. Realistic simulations are helping keep them sharp ready for combat anywhere around the world. The Multiple Integrated Laser Engagement System, more commonly known as MILES, is used by the United States Armed Forces and other militaries around the world for training purposes. It uses lasers and blank cartridges to simulate actual battle. 
Miles provides the U.S. Army with the ability to simulate combat without using lethal bullets. In Miles training, coated laser beams are fired rather than bullets. Miles can be used with infantry and armor. What we have here is a representation, we call it a PUT, Programmable Universal Target System. This frame will go on in HLVW. The coated laser beams assure that an M16 does not kill an M1 tank. The system uses eye-safe lasers to engage targets. These are the IR sensors that will receive the shot from the uh, opposing forces weapons. Uh, we'll receive the shot from the uh, air bursts or whatever whatever's events going on. You all, in the center you have a uh, harness control unit, which is the interface between the soldier and the vest. It tells him if he's been hit, it tells him if he's, uh, if he's been reset, uh, you know, if he's bit past, if everything's working great. The umpire control gun is the main tool for the observer controllers. Uh, they can use it to kill, resurrect, and uh, reset uh, soldiers. Also, they can provide critical wounds, light wounds, uh, near misses, and all kinds of events uh, with vehicles and soldiers uh, with their equipment. This system has helped redefine urban warfare training by giving soldiers immediate feedback on their actions feedback that can someday save their lives. <laughs> military exercises and training are important steps in preparing a military force for combat. Modern day simulators are helping hone skills, helping save money, ammunitions, and lives. <laughs> 